Wednesday, September 27th, 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern, Teddy Kekstadt has a, uh, a webinar. This is capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads. His last webinar was phenomenal. You can also get access to that on TFNN.com. Uh, it's great. I mean, and this is really, uh, you know, if you're just starting to trade, right, these are things you've got to know. You've, you've got to know them. And Teddy has so much experience in trading, uh, over 30 years, um, and uh, he is so thorough with it. And I promise you, you'll come away with a better understanding um, of how to, how to read charts and, uh, you know, entries and exits and all that. Teddy, are you there with us? I am, Jacob. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's a nice sunny day in Chicago. Sounds good. How's, how's the weather? Uh, you know what? Actually, it's not too bad. Uh, Yesterday was, uh, you know, low 70s, so it was actually pretty nice out. Envious. It is uh, extraordinarily hot in Florida. So, what do you uh, what do you make of the CPI numbers? What do you what do we have looking at today? Uh, well, to me, actually, it's what I've been expecting. I think most of the numbers that you're going to see over the next couple of months are going to start to spike up inflationary signals a little bit. Is it going to be radical? I don't believe so, but I do think it's going to continue. You can see with the price of oil where it's at right now. I mean, there's pretty much I, when I was on Monday, I was talking about the oil market, and I think that where we just that low we just came off of in the in the uh, you know lower 70 area, that's pretty much going to be your floor for oil. I think moving forward for possibly the next year or so, right. you know, and I think that it it would be kind of unwise to really think that we're going to have see anything different over the next like six to twelve months for sure. So I can see that oil easily probably will be back over a hundred dollars very soon you know is it going to happen in the next week or two probably not is it going to happen over the next couple of months i think so i think people are going to be very upset when it comes to christmas time and how much fuel costs are going to be which that's going to trickle down into all kinds of other sectors from the food sector everything else we're going to have inflation spiking there so i don't see how even remotely the fed is going to come off their hawkish stance these are things that i've been talking about for months and i think it's, it's starting to become evident with the these numbers, you know, so I mean, obviously things can change, things could, the numbers could turn to a much better scenario, but I don't see what fundamentals are in place right now that could create such a situation. Right, right, right. I totally agree. And that's what we were saying earlier on the show, too. Like, I think we're going to see these elevated energy prices going in. Um, I suppose for September, the Fed doesn't, they suggest they're not going to raise rates, but I, I, I think you're right saying that hawkish stance is there. And obviously you have far more insight as well. So um, regarding currency pairings, you know, if we see a stronger dollar, we see uh, some places in Europe, you know, particularly Germany faltering a little bit. Um, what are you seeing regarding, uh, you know, let's say the euro to the dollar and uh, how that affects the broader economy? Uh, it's a great question. Well, definitely the euro and I think also the pound when their relationship to the dollar is going to be rather weak over the next three to four months at least. Uh, the fundamentals <clears throat> and technicals for both uh, economies, whether it's the EU or the UK, are disastrous right now. Right. Um, there are so many things in place that uh, unless they have a lot of cha changes politically, you know, and also in their economic uh, structure, I don't think anything is going to change uh, this war with Russia and Ukraine. There's no end in sight. They don't want an end in sight. You know, what their objective is, is an unrealistic objective. And that objective is going to continue to put a strain on their economies, you know. And I think in Germany especially, they're collapsing. Yeah. You know, this is a very bad situation. It's not going to get better. You know, for I think the euro, U.S. dollar especially could be pretty close to parity, you know, come the end of the year and definitely into the first quarter mm -hmm. of next year. No, it's fascinating, really. Um, and we're, we're over here, we're taking a really close look, seeing how the DXY moves. Obviously, gold's really on our radar and everything. And you have such an inverse relationship, uh, you know, regarding that. So, if, you know, if rates go higher, at least in the U.S. dollar, and that strengthens, you know, comparatively speaking, um, we might be in a tough spot uh, going forward uh, with gold. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, the one currency that you have to kind of watch, I think, would be the U.S. dollar yen because you had the uh -huh. Bank of Japan that came out the other day and, uh, you know, they had a change in, in leadership a few months back. Are they going to become really aggressively hawkish? Probably not. However, they did come off the, and say that, you know what, the uh, 
the short term, definitely in the short term, um, keeping rates low is something that they're starting to take off the table. So are they going to be aggressively hawkish? Probably not. Are they going to do something? I believe so. Is it going to happen in the next couple of weeks? I don't think so. I think it's going to probably happen in another month or so. They're, they're probably waiting to see what our Fed does first. So if they don't, if our Fed doesn't do anything, Maybe the BOJ is going to back off and hold their stance. If the Fed does raise rates, then I can see the Bank of Japan coming out and raising rates or doing some sort of, you know, hawkish maneuver. Um, so I think that the U.S. dollar yen, you have to be careful at these high levels. I think it's still in a buy. The bull trend is there. Buying breaks, I think, is a good situation. I'd just be very careful about <clears throat> buying into these highs where we're at right now. Sure. And, you know, I have an interesting question for you. And this this particular case doesn't really have wide-scale impacts on global um, economics. Mm -hmm. But I, I brought up when I was filming for Tommy uh, last week, uh, the, the Polish actually decreased their interest rates um, in a massive way. And, I mean, are you how, how the relationship between that and the Zloty, I mean, what will we see with something like that economy? I mean, Poland's a relatively large economy. I mean, it's not a player like Germany or France, but it's a large, it's a large country. And uh, I think going forward, that further can destabilize some situations over in Europe as well. And I wonder if you had any insight, because it's a unique situation. And nobody mm -hmm. else is lowering rates like this. Correct. You know what? That's a very, you know, we had a caller la last week and also this week we talked about it on air. Very yeah. good question. Uh, you, you're thinking exactly why are they cutting rates? Well, you got to remember, <clears throat> we cut rates down to zero in this country. We should never have been at those levels. What we should be doing right now is cutting rates, but that would be if we were at higher levels than we are now. That would be the smart thing to do in this situation. That's not what the Fed wants to do. The Polish economy is looking at something totally different. You got to realize they know the EU is collapsing. So what is the smart thing for them to do? They're not doing they're not trying to create cheap money, which is what we did in this country for decades. That's not what they're doing. They're in a situation where their economy they're dealing with high inflation. They're dealing with all these constraints because of the of the sanctions against Russia. Their economy, they're trying to protect it. So that's why they did what they did. It's the only thing that really makes sense. And they can do it because they have the room to do so. So is it a long term plan for them to keep rates low? Probably not. Is it a short-term thing? I think absolutely. They're trying to help the, their own economy with what's going on. It's been happening now for the past two years, you know. So, and I think that's one of those things that you have to be mindful of that currency relationship, because if that's the case, obviously the U.S. dollar has a lot of strength versus the, that currency. You know, that's why you've seen a radical move. I and mean, there was, on a monthly basis, a very good buy signal that occurred uh, at the end of August. So, I mean that. On a monthly basis, I think, yeah, I think that currency for sure is going to remain bullish regardless of what the dollar does with other currencies because of that central bank relationship. But very good question. Fascinating insight. Thank you so much, Teddy, for joining us. That was a great interview as always. Folks, Teddy releases the Tiger Forex Report every Monday, and this is going over central banks, uh, currency pairings. It is a phenomenal newsletter. Check it out. 30-day money-back guarantee. Teddy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jacob. Take care. We'll be right back.